Hello our viewers, wherever you're watching us from, uh, this is uh, Brother Andrew Piri. I want to share with you the word of God, wherever you might be watching me right now. I pray that God should bless you, God should touch you, God should change your life in the name of Jesus Christ. As we are enjoying this beautiful weekend, uh, called uh, Easter. I want you to know one thing that God loves you so much and he died on the cross for you just to demonstrate his love. He came from heaven to show you how much he cares for you. So I don't want to base much of my argument talking to you about what is Easter, who started Easter, is Easter good, this and that. I don't want to do that, but I just want to bring this word to you in, in a few minutes. So I want us to pray as I share this word. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your word. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your power. I pray that every listener shall be blessed. Wherever they are, touch them, teach them something, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So I'm going to read from the book of uh, First John, chapter 1, this one. So the Bible says, That which was from the beginning, mark that word, from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at, and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. Wow, this, says, this statement is very much powerful. You know, it starts by telling us that which we have heard from the beginning. Look at this. We have heard from the beginning. What did you hear? Or what did you, what did these people hear? Or where, what were they hearing? Or what happened? Oh, what is the type of hearing that they, these people experience? What information are they trying to present us? That which you have heard from the beginning. So when you look at in, uh, in, in the Bible, when you look at, uh, for example, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And when you go in John chapter 1, this one says, In the beginning there was the word, there was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was with God. And here is telling you and me that that which we have heard from the beginning, we have heard of the word. What is it trying to tell us? In other words, it says, This thing which you have heard from the beginning, who is this beginning? This who is the beginning of the beginning? Meaning, that which you have heard is telling us this message of Jesus Christ which it brings to us now in our wants us to know about the deity of Christ, who Christ is, and he is the beginning of all beginnings. And he says, which we have heard. So these people, they heard something that in the beginning was the word. And, and remember that most of these people who are light in this, uh, in this time, a lot to people who were philosophic, People who thought too much, people who could just wake up just from their sleep, then uh, after waking up, when someone just go around the sun and start thinking, why does the sun go like this? Is there God? Is there what? What is it? So people who had thoughts and people, even even when the Bible starts with a statement like, in the beginning was the word, what first should come in your mind is, why did John not write in the beginning was Jesus? So because of, of of the the level the people he was writing to he was writing to a philosophic word this is why he used the word in the beginning the word just that word in the beginning was the word in those time the word which was is called logos in greek had something which was believed to be powerful it had a divine power and that divine power According to the philosophical world, they call it as a philosophic king, which was, uh, which was more like uh, uh, what can I say? Which was more like uh, the word, just the word, 
into them it had the power of reason so that reason they were saying it was god so when john was telling them in the beginning was the reason which is jesus christ and is trying to tell them this word this word this logos is god the philosophers they were able to understand that that john was trying to refer to them that the word with jesus christ is that reason is the word logos so to the philosopher's word it had no any effect but when it comes to our generation when you read that and we're like how does this person start a book by saying in the beginning was the word what am i going to know what word what word? was it a poet or what but when you go into details that that book explains to us the detailed thing that in the beginning was Christ Jesus Christ himself and he was that word the thing that those people were failing to think about is who, who is this logos who is this logos but John tried to bring it out that this logos is Christ himself hallelujah so I want me I want just to base my word like John was trying to refer these people to the word who is Logos, the beginning of the beginning, the beginning of the beginning, the person who has no beginning or no end, who is Christ Jesus, was trying to introduce them to that person. And when you go into the door, it says, we have heard, we have heard of what, we have heard of him, we have heard of him. He was coming, he was prophesied by different people, they spoke this and that. And when you continue to hear that, you find that it says, which we have seen with our eyes, we have looked at, and our hands have touched, and this we proclaim concerning the word of life. Wow. This is an apostle who is writing to these people. Apostle John is writing to these people that this message I'm bringing to you, I am not bringing it to you like someone who heard it from somewhere, but I'm bringing this message because I was there and I have touched, I've talked to this, I've talked to this God, I've talked to this, to this deity. What a word. And he's telling you concerning the word of life. I want you to know that Jesus Christ is watching whatsoever is happening. If he was there in the beginning, he manifested himself through his word and john tells us that i'm giving you this testimony concerning the word of life wherever you're watching me from i want you to understand that god will never leave you alone and will never disappoint you because he knows whatever you're passing through So, I want you to, to see what John was trying to bring these people to. Why was he lighting a, uh, that which you have heard from the beginning we proclaim to you? Why was he giving them all that thing? The reason is found here where John tries now to bring these people to tell them that what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to lie to you, I want you to know. I want you to know something. Say, chapter 2 says, uh, the life appeared, we have seen it, and we proclaim, we have seen it and testify to it, we proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and his Son, and, and, and he appeared to us. We proclaim to you that we have seen and heard, so that you may have fellowship with us, and our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We like this thing to make our joy complete. So John is writing to these people to make their joy be completely. I want this week you are going to experience the joy of God in your life. Some people have never had peace before. You have never seen peace. You have never experienced it. But through this word, you are going to be a different person. Let the word of God transform you bring resurrection to you in the name of Jesus Christ. And I want to tell you, that which you have heard, that which we have handled, 
we proclaim it to you. And this is the word of God, that your joy might be complete. As the world is thinking of what are we going to do, I want you to know, and I want you to have this peace, that Jesus Christ is in charge because he was there from the beginning. And until now, in this situation, in your life, is there. Just call on his name. Have fellowship with him. You see, in this world, there are two people. There are those who are in the fellowship with God and those who are not in fellowship with him. And John is telling us that we might have fellowship. I don't care what you've done, but the grace of God is able to make you a new man. Look at Peter. He denied Jesus Christ. But do you know what Jesus Christ did? He did not come to ask him, so Peter, you, you denied me. No, but he came to show him how love, how loving he is. And he told him, Peter, take care of my sheep. He wanted to restore relationship with him. And this is a way to you that Jesus Christ is life. And he wants you to be in relationship with him. Start this week that we are starting with a prayer and things are going to go well with you. Learn to meditate on his word. I'll be back again to share with you the insight in the word of God so that we might learn and grow in faith. May God bless you so much. Thank you.